So in this video, we're going to consider equilibrium. And by equilibrium, I don't mean anything more than some of the forces and some of the moments being zero. And so let's consider a structure here. And it's just a beam with a person standing on it. And what we want to do is go to every point in space, every single point in space, we can describe the stress tensor at that point. And here, we're just going to work in two dimensions, so an xy coordinate system. So I have two faces for every little differential cube we pull out and two components of the force. So it's a two by two matrix in this case. And that's only for simplicity. But what we wanna do is go to every point in space and we wanna describe what does equilibrium tell us about the constraints on what the stress tensor has to be. Before we do that, let's work through something that has to be true for every function. Here I've graphed an arbitrary function f of x, uh, so just a simple one dimensional function. And what we wanna do is remind ourselves how we can approximate this function. So if I want to approximate this function around the point where x is equal to zero, so right here, the simplest approximation that I could ever make is just equal to the value. And so this would be like saying if I want to know if I want to predict the weather, the simplest thing I do is just assume that it's the same uh, tomorrow as it will be today, and it will be the same the day after that as it is today. And so our simplest approximation is just to say that whatever value we are at zero, the function just stays that way. And, you know, for some things that turns out to be an okay approximation for a little while, but we see that it doesn't stay as a good one for very long. So the next thing we could do is add a line. And so rather than approximating the function as a constant, we can approximate it as a line. And the way I would do that is say df dx is the slope of the line, the derivative of the function with respect to x, but I need to evaluate that at x is equal to zero, and then I would just multiply it by x. And the next best approximation that we could add would be to add some curvature in there as well. So we could kind of keep going with this analogy, and I would add higher and higher derivatives to the function and get a better and better approximation. Okay, so let's consider a tiny cube of material here. And again, our coordinate system is just the usual x, y one. And this we're gonna consider as the center of our little element. And we're gonna imagine that our little element is dx in width and dy in height. All right, very good. And so now what are the forces that are acting on this? Well, they just come from the stress tensor. And so remember the stress tensor we're defining is the value at this point here. So let's talk about the x force acting on this face, the x component of the force acting on this face. Well, there's a component Txx, which acts in that direction, but the value Txx is really only known at the center here. Here, we're, we've moved away from the center, and if Txx is allowed to vary in space, then the value a little bit away from the center isn't equal to the value in the center. But we're gonna use our little approx our linear approximation to evaluate what Tx is, Txx is at this point as opposed to the center. And it's just equal to the derivative of Txx with respect to x times dx over two. Now note, I'm using a little bit of a squiggly notation here for my differentials. That's because this is a partial derivative because as we'll see, Txx could depend on x and y. So we, we wanna use the partial derivative notation to note that it's a function of many variables. Well, what about the force over here? So we also have Txx acting on this face, except in this case, now we've moved to the left. So our dx is gonna be negative. So we're gonna do minus partial Txx with respect to x times dx over two. All right, very good. Now let's move to the upper surface of the cube. It's gonna be Tyx acting on the y face in the x direction. However, Tyx is only defined at the center. So again, we have to use our little linear approximation to move away from the center. So that's plus the partial derivative of Tyx with respect to y this time, right? Because the variation in this direction times dy over two. And then likewise, 
we have in this direction t y x plus sorry minus in this case t y x with respect to y times dy over 2 and again the minus sign is because I decreased in y here I increased in y so those are the x forces acting on our little differential element we'll do the y forces in just a second but let's add those up right because the sum of the forces needs to equal to zero okay so let's add all those up so we have txx so we have this force right here but remember this is a stress and so the stress to get a force has to be multiplied by the area which is dy in this case here we have that we've drawn the force acting in this direction so it's negative Here, the force is positive, so we add it. And now with this term, we have this stress, but it's acting over this face, so I have to multiply it by dx. And then we have this force acting in the negative direction. Perfect. And we want to set that equal to zero. And now if we notice, we'll see a bunch of things that cancel out, right? Because here I have a txx times dy. Here I have a minus txx times dy. Here I have a tyx times dx. Here I have a minus tyx times dx. So those terms go away. And here notice that now we have a negative and a negative. So that's just going to turn into a positive. Here I have a negative and a negative. So again, those also turn into positives. And now we have the same thing added to itself. So t, the derivative, partial derivative of txx with respect to x times dx over 2, and the partial derivative of txx over dx times dx over 2. So those things are just going to add, and the same thing here. And so that's our result. So the dx and the dy's just cancel. And left with our final condition. Uh, that these, deri these derivatives of the components of the stress tensor have to follow this kind of relationship in order for the sum of the forces in the x direction to equal to zero. So now let's do the y forces acting on our little cube. And again, we just need to expand everything a little bit away from the origin here, from the center of our little cube. So the y force acting here is nothing more than txy. Txy, though, however, is the value of the stress tensor here right at the center. So perturbed a little way off to the right, we just have to add the derivative. So the partial derivative of Txy with respect to x times dx over 2. Acting on this face, we're going to have the same result, only we're moving to the left. And since we move to the left, our distance from the origin is dx over 2, negative. On the upper surface, we're going to have our normal stresses, so tyy. But again, tyy is the value here, the value up a little bit. So we have the forces, the normal forces here. Okay, and so now we have some of the forces in the y direction also equaling to zero. And again, we do the same thing as we did before, and we just have to remember that we need to multiply each face we need to multiply each stress by the area of the face and just kind of add them all up. So let's just do it real quickly. So for these two forces, we have this result. So here's this force, here's this force. One's pointing up, one's pointing down, hence the negative sign. And they're stresses, so they need to multi be multiplied by the distance of this surface, which is dy. Now let's add in the normal stresses. So very similar result as before. And again, we can cancel some things out because we see tyy minus tyy, txy minus txy. We see these two negative signs become positive signs. These two negative signs become positive signs. Perfect. And we're going to have a very comparable result as before. Again, it means the sum of this thing needs to equal zero, which means my dx dy 
is multiplied by both terms and that's going to cancel. And so there's my final result. So partial derivatives of the xy and the yy component of the tensor also have to be equal to zero. Now let's consider the sum of the moments for our little element. And if we're going to sum the moments about the center, you can see that the normal forces aren't going to contribute to any kind of spin, right? Because they're going to act through the origin here, right? So this is our origin right in the middle. So to sum, for some of the moments, we only have to consider the, the shear forces acting as such. So again, let's expand these things out. This force here is Txy plus the partial derivative with respect to x. The forces acting on the upper and the lower surface are Tyx, but now it's the distance in this direction. So we have to take the partial derivative with respect to y and multiply by dy over two. All right, very good. Now all we have to do is sum the moments about this point right here. And so what does that tell us? All right, so let's look at this term first. So that's going to be a moment spinning counterclockwise. So we'll call that positive because it curls out of the page. So that's Txy. So that's this term right here. What's the moment arm? Another factor of dx over two. This one here is also spinning in the counterclockwise direction. So it's going to have the same sign. And it also has to be multiplied by the moment arm dx over two. Now again, these are stresses. So in order to get the force, we also need to multiply this whole thing by a factor of dy. Now we add, need to add in the forces on the upper and the lower surface. This one is acting clockwise. This one is also acting clockwise, so they're both negative. So we need to put a negative sign here. The upper surface right here, so there's the value, needs to be multiplied by the moment arm which again is another factor of dy over two. This one down here is going to add. And again, the moment arm is a factor of dy over two. And again, both of these are stresses. So to get force, we have to multiply by the area, so dx. Okay, so now something a little bit different happens. So now this is positive, this is negative, but you can see these two terms are the same. And so they cancel each other out. Positive, negative, again, these two terms are the same. So they cancel each other out. So what are we left with here? Well, what I wrote here was this difference, but remember this needs to equal something, so it equals to zero. And let's look at what we have here. So we have Txy, Txy factor of two. So those are just gonna add, and they're gonna add up to Txy times dx dy. We have a minus sign here. So we have Tyx dy over two, dy over two, add them so the two's gone. We have dy dx is equal to zero. So the dy's and the dx's cancel out. And what are we left with? Txy equals Tyx. So this is the statement that the stress tensor has to be symmetric. So here's a summary of what we learned. So we applied three conditions for equilibrium. Some of the forces in the x and y direction equal to zero, and some of the moments has to equal zero. And so what we learned is that some of the moments equaling to zero means that this matrix is symmetric. And so that means that for our tensor, which has four numbers in it, it really only has three unique ones. So some of the moments equaling zero gets rid of uh, having to solve for one of these numbers. Some of the forces in the x direction equals to zero puts this constraint on the components of the stress tensor, that the variation of this component in the x direction has to balance the variation of this component in the y direction. Some of the forces in the y direction equal to zero puts a constraint on these two components. So it says that the variation of this component in the y direction 
has to balance the variation of this component in the x direction. So these probably don't seem like very meaningful equations yet because they're very difficult to interpret. Uh, however, we're going to get there, so we'll be able to interpret these equations uh, shortly. But there should be something very important here that should stand out, which is we have three unknown numbers, right? Which are the three unknown components of this stress tensor, but we only have two equations. So we're going to have to do more work to get to a point that we have a problem that we can actually solve.